Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to talk about PHP in 2019. Yes, you got it right that we are talking about PHP in 2019. I know most of you are thinking about some modern things in the 2019 like Node.js, Angular, Vue, React. In fact, I usually talk all about these modern frameworks and libraries. But today, I want to point your attention back onto one of the not so new language, which is PHP. So obviously this question might be burning up inside you that it is 2019, everybody's talking about Django, Node, Ruby on Rails, React, Angular. So should I spend my time in learning PHP, especially if I'm in 2019, is it a right choice? And if I want to start with PHP, how can I get started? What should be the ideal path of getting started in PHP? That's why PHP deserves its own video in 2019. Let's get started. Before I go ahead and talk about PHP and its use cases, I would like to bring the highlight of the point use cases. Now, this is a common thing that I do in universities and colleges when I visit them. I usually ask people that, hey, uh, I hope you love Python or either JavaScript. And usually the answer is, yes, I love Python, I love JavaScript. Because these are two modern trendy languages and everybody loves them. And my next question to the Python guys is, uh, why do you love Python so much? The answer that I get is interesting and usually the answer that I get is, uh, because it's easy. I love how simplified the Python is and how easy it is to write code in it. And to be very surprising, I would like to ask you another question here. Do you love a programming language just because it's easier to write? Honestly, what you are saying exactly it means is because to write a for loop or if else statement is easier in a programming language or there are some syntactic sugar over it, that's why you love a programming language? If that's the case, I think you are mistaken, my friend. That should not be the case. First and foremost, I also love Python, but not because it's having a syntactic sugar. In case you will read a few blog and articles on Medium, you will realize that just we don't have these curly braces and code indentation is the only thing in Python. It is one of the critique point by variety of programmers. So definitely Python is obviously favorite language for many programmers, but not because it's having a simplified code or it is not so much verbose. It's because it is having so many libraries and doing things is easier there. Just because there are so many third party libraries that you can include in your code and can perform things faster. Python is also not one of the most fastest programming language, but still things are easier just because of these third party libraries. So when next time somebody asks you that, hey, why I love your programming language, you should, your answer should be something like, because of the abundance of these libraries and the use cases in variety of scenarios. Now this brings us to back our point which is use cases. Before choosing any programming language, use cases are the most important thing that you should look up. Now obviously if I want to make an Android app, I would love to choose something like uh, either JavaScript or core Java or as a Kotlin. I would never choose something like Python for my Android development, surely there are frameworks available, but for that use case, Python can be an absolutely bad choice. Now similar on to that, if I would love to choose something like uh, machine learning or uh, deep learning things, I would love to choose something like uh, Python there. I would love to choose R there. I would not like to go with uh, something like PHP or ASP.NET. Surely there are libraries and frameworks there as well, but I would like to go with Python or R. So that is exactly the use case. Okay, that's too much of the side talk. Now let's bring up our journey back onto PHP. So a lot of people think that with the emerging technologies like Node.js, React, Angular, nobody thinks about PHP. And my dear friend, that's a myth. That's a wrong notion. PHP and MySQL is still one of the most rock solid combination even in 2019. And I don't see anywhere this is going anywhere at all. This is still rock solid and is going to be rock solid as well. Yes, I know, I am aware of that, that the modern startups likes to invest their time in some frameworks, usually Django or Node.js, Angular, React, these kind of stuff. But you, you cannot avoid the fact that still WordPress is one of the most dominating thing over the web. Maybe you hate it, maybe I hate it, but that doesn't mean we are governing the entire internet. It doesn't matter if I hate something or you hate something, it is what it is, it is the fact. 
And the fact says that WordPress is still one of the most dominating technology over the internet. And what WordPress is made up of? PHP and MySQL. A lot of work that we do at in-house for the clients as well is still dependent on PHP. And that is why finding job with, this, with the amplified knowledge of PHP is still super easy. Now this brings us again the question that should I be learning PHP in 2019? And my answer to that would be yes, absolutely. There is nothing wrong in learning PHP. PHP, you'll see this in quite a blogs and article as well, is a little bit funny language. Yes, it is because uh, mainly because of the reason that how you learn the PHP is a little bit onto a funnier side as well as the amount of error that gives us and the displayment of these errors are absolutely funny as well. PHP is still a programming language which is quite easier to find job, is quite easier to deliver the project to the clients and especially once you understand the PHP, the whole new world of WordPress including the WordPress customization, WordPress theme development, WordPress plugin development and variety of thungs, uh, tons of things just opens up into your programming box. Just because Node.js, Django and all these frameworks are famous nowadays doesn't mean that nobody is using PHP. At tons of startup, at tons of uh, rock solid companies are still using PHP and MySQL combination. As I told you, it's a deadly combination, still one of the most powerful one and a ton of people are using it. This means that finding job is also going to be much more easier. Now, will you be getting a job into a big scale companies with that, with the PHP? Answer is yes and no, it's, it equally depends. Still, a variety of big companies still depends on PHP. But moreover, kind of job hunting is on to the side where you do a freelancing market. If you are one of the guys who are looking forward that I should establish my career in freelancing world, then you cannot avoid PHP and MySQL, my dear friend. There is no escape from that. So for all those people who are looking forward that I will be my own boss, I would be doing freelancing services on websites like uh, freelancer.com, Upwork, Fiverr and tons of other things. Uh, there is no skip from PHP and I would highly recommend you to get your uh, entire A game on PHP. This definitely brings us to the next question that what should be my path to learn PHP? And that actually is a little bit trickier one. A lot of people, it's not like a language that you can learn just like Java. You can just start with that and you can just go with that. PHP, if you are going with that kind of way, you are going to struggle, my friend. First and foremost, don't compare PHP with other languages like Java or Python or any other language. It is not like that. Now surely, just like these languages, you can jump directly into PHP, but it's not going to be a fun journey. Instead, you might want to follow this path, so what I'm about to give you. First and foremost, learn HTML and CSS, and not just by learning the syntax or the tags at all. I want you to build at least three or four good looking websites. And when I say websites in 2019, of course, they need to be responsive and they should use modern colors and modern design. So the whole idea is at least make five or six HTML CSS project. Now, a lot of people will say that there is no such requirement to learn PHP because it's a backend language and you can totally skip the front end part. You can, my dear friend, you can, but the journey is not at all going to be fun because let's just, just take an example. When you learn like four loops in the PHP and you just use an unordered list item that looks absolutely ugly, it is no fun. But instead, when your front end is actually a little bit beautiful and then you are repeating some stuff, it makes things much more interesting. So always makes your study interesting. So first and foremost, spend some time with HTML and CSS, maybe bootstrap as well in case you are interested in that, in that part. So go ahead, first spend some time in building up the front end page. And of course, this is going to be helping, very much helping in case you want to deliver a full fledged project to a client. So once you are done with the step number one, then under the step number two, you can get started with PHP. Now, yes, alongside with the PHP, I would highly recommend you to go and understand MySQL as well. There are other databases as well, but MySQL should be there. So step number two, go with the PHP, learn all the syntax like if loops, for loops and all those things which are pretty fun to learn in PHP. Understand how each and everything works, how you can start the codes, where you can end and if you don't end it, what happens and all those amazing stuff with the PHP. Then go ahead and learn MySQL as well. MySQL is one of the most easiest database that you can get started, but eventually it can become very complex as well. So don't move on to the complex part yet. First, try to create small projects, something like basic CRUD, but of course, from the beautiful web pages. 
Now, if your plan is to understand the PHP and MySQL as well, I would highly recommend you to take a look on PDO as well. Now, PDO is a modern way of interacting with the databases and how we deal up with the basically how the PHP works. So just note it down somewhere that there is some topic known as PDO. Uh, you need to learn that as well. So that should be on your step number four. Again, quick repetition. Step number one, attack HTML and CSS. Make few projects in that. Step number two, learn the PHP syntax and basics. Step number three, go on to MySQL basics as well and how you can connect MySQL with PHP and of course, how you can interact them with the HTML CSS. And as a step number four, understand the PDO as well. But learning this much is not going to help you to deliver or to serve the clients as well because the client market in the PHP, especially on the websites like Freelancer and Upwork, is very competitive and you won't be standing much chance uh, just because you have a knowledge of PHP and you can design a few five or six web pages. It's not going to be helping much. So you need to step up your game. How you can do that? Let me tell you that as well. This brings us to the next topic, which is framework in PHP. Now there are a variety of frameworks in PHP. I have majorly worked in just two of them, the Laravel, some call that as Laravel, Laravel, however you want to pronounce that, and the Symfony. These are the market dominating ones, so I recommend you to get started with that. But this is going to help you to get your job in a corporate sector, but in case your goal is totally oriented towards the freelancer market, then you might want to jump into the market of WordPress. Now WordPress in itself is a big and gigantic CMS, content management system. And you cannot master it in just weeks or months. It takes definitely a lot of months, but it's certainly doable. Usually in the freelancing market, clients are not going to pay you just because you, you can install WordPress on their hosting services. Surely these kinds of projects come up, but they are not much of like money. They just pay you like $15 or $20 just for that. Surely that's a good amount of money for just having a few clicks, but you don't want to involve into that. Since you are a programmer, you might want to get into more trickier jobs. And that can be explored using the WordPress Codex. Now WordPress Codex helps you to understand the ins and outs of WordPress. How you can design custom plugins, how you can design custom themes, how you can edit a normal looking website into a WordPress theme. These all are done using the codex of WordPress. So in the world of WordPress, yes, your regular PHP, MySQL and SQL query works, but there are a lot of things to learn. And especially the codex of the WordPress uh, site is going to be something, some location on the web page where you might want to stand, spend a lot of time. Now, this includes uh, development of the custom WordPress theme and uh, how you can query some of the things in the WordPress. Yes, I know you know how to query into a MySQL database, but Putting up a query on the WordPress is a whole different game and you definitely require to go through with the codex of the WordPress quite a lot and in fact on a multiple project so that you properly understand the structure of the WordPress. And this structure is changed quite a lot in the version 5 which is recently released in the WordPress. So you might want to go through with that codex. And don't just go through with that. You should be fully able to design custom WordPress theme you should be able to convert regular bootstrap templates or any other HTML templates into the WordPress templates. Also, you should be able to design custom plugins for a variety of needs. These are the basic requirement. Remember, client don't pay you for easy work, client pay you for the tough work. And uh, I'm gonna say it's not the easiest or tough or the easiest job when you design custom plugins or custom themes. Surely, once you are habitual in that, it, it becomes like a second day to you. Uh, but of course, for the beginners, it is definitely a learning curve. So now that you know that PHP is not something like gone days, it is still here, very active. It's pretty easy to find jobs as well, both in corporate sector, both in freelancer market as well. So don't just learn PHP, invest your time in learning frameworks, in learning WordPress as well, so that you can move forward in life. Now, one thing also that I have noticed uh, is that once a person becomes a PHP developer, especially PS PHP and MySQL, of course, combination of that, I have seen these people actually switch into other frameworks and especially multiple other languages as well, uh, whether that's a Django or Node.js, they are able to move much, much faster as well. Now, this might be a wrong statement because not everybody is equal, but personally, I have realized that a few people who have taken up my course onto Node or Django, uh, they were coming up from a PHP MySQL ba background and they just finished the course absolutely like, like a sprint race, not like a marathon. And they were able to build the projects quickly, 
I'm not saying that everybody is same. Probably they do have tons of experience in the past with the PHP and now switching is much more easier, but that's just a statement I wanted to put up. So whole story short, let's summarize quickly. PHP is still active and one of the most popular language around. PHP MySQL is still a deadly combination and you don't want to skip that. In case you have slightest interest, you might want to learn it, but just because of the peer pressure, everybody's talking about Node and Django, you are switching into that. No, please don't do that. But of course, do understand the use cases where it is used mostly right now. Probably the industries that you're looking up to go, they are using Node or Django or Angular or something and you're learning PHP that would also be a wrong thing. So don't do that. Understand the use cases and what the problem you want to solve or what kind of project you want to build up. But of course, it's not like it should be looked down. Don't think that everybody is talking about that language, I should learn that. No, just understand what is your use case, what you want to achieve. And with that said, PHP alone is not good enough. You might want to get friendly with the front-end design as well. You might want to get friendly with the MySQL, SQL queries and PDO as well. Once you are done with that, you might want to invest time in either Laravel or Symfony. In case your, your interest is in the freelancer market, you might want to put up your A-game with the WordPress and especially the customization of WordPress. Customization of WordPress includes customization of theme, customization of existing normal template into a, into a WordPress template, as well as some of the customized plugins as well. So that can be your plan of action in case you want to go into the world of PHP. So that is it for this video, people. I have linked down some of the resources to learn for this particular path as well in case you are interested in that. So check out the description below in case you are new here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends so that they can also learn something. That's it for this video. Let's catch you up in the next one.